Hello my friends, my name is Dr. Sayyid Kazmi. Welcome to my YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to talk about two common conditions of preschoolers known as breath holding spells and reflex anoxic seizures. These two entities are known as seizure mimics. Basically these entities they mimic uh, epilepsy like presentation but in fact they are not because the actual pathology is not there in the brain. Nevertheless, they are quite common and quite frightening conditions. So they are one of the common reasons of uh, presentations to the emergency departments. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started with these two topics. And uh, let's talk about how do we differentiate between these two entities. So the first thing is that these are common clinical entities. It's more common in the age group one to five years. As I told you, they are mostly confused with seizures and predominantly they come to the hospital because the parents are very much frightened and they think that the child has got a proper seizure episode. But in fact, they are not proper seizures because the actual pathology is not there in the brain. So if you do the ictal and post-ictal EEGs, electroencephalograph, you would see that there are no abnormal brain waves in these conditions. So the pathology actually doesn't lie in the brain. That's why we call them benign conditions uh, which are caused by problems outside of the brain rather than in the brain. Now, how do we differentiate between the two entities? Breath holding spells and reflux anoxic seizures, they're very much like, you know, related with one another. They very much are similar to one another. But in breath holding spells, what happened? Most of the times, 95 out of 100, the episode begins with crying. So this child either has got a tantrum or because he's mucking around with, uh, you know, with siblings or something, or he gets hurt, they start crying. Now this crying is associated with prolonged expiration phase. So as they are crying, there is more and more prolonged expiration phase of the breathing. So much to the extent that eventually it is led by brief cessation of breathing. So when the child stops breathing for a few moments, what happens? It leads to hypoxia. There is less oxygen because the breathing has stopped. Now, because of that, it leads to color changes. So that child would become cyanosed, might become gray. And because the breathing has stopped, obviously there is less oxygen in the blood and that less oxygen goes to the brain. So what happens? These kids, they eventually collapse. They might become unconscious and then it can be associated with seizures. Not every child gets seizures, but most of them, they might like, you know, simply become gray and they stop breathing for a while and then they come back. But in some kids, because the brain is not getting enough oxygen, they might start having a brief episode of generalized tonic clonic seizures or they might become stiff or, well, I mean, they might even, as I told you, they eventually drop as well. So this happens for a few moments and that is followed by a quick recovery so as soon as the child starts breathing again uh, the oxygen levels become normal and the child becomes fine so within a moment they are fine this they, they they stand up and they start playing in contrast to that reflex anoxic seizures usually they start with sudden onset of something which is quite painful here the child is not crying so what happened he bangs his head becomes dazed or he becomes startled because of something he is terrified or is excited uh, way too much so what happens is that because of that excitement because of that sudden onset or onset of painful stimuli these kids who have got an underlying issue of increased vagal intonation so what happened the vagal system is stimulated and when the vagal st system is stimulated what happens is that the cardiac output and the blood pressure falls so increased vagal tone leads to reduced cardiac output, reduced blood pressure. So what happens is that the blood starts pooling in the periphery. And because of that, the color changes. So most of these kids would start by becoming pale. So they become very pale as they, you know, somebody has like sucked the blood out of them. And then they collapse simply because the cardiac output is so low, the blood pressure is low. The brain is not getting enough uh, blood. So they just collapse after collapsing sometimes they can start seizing else so there will be a brief epi episode of seizures and then the seizure they suddenly um, stop why because as the child collapses then because of the uh, same plane the uh, the cardiac output starts coming back to normal 
uh, the seizure they stop and usually the children or these kids who have got reflux anoxia they cry after you know recovering from the seizure so one clinical entity is in breath holding spells the episode starts with crying in usually reflux anoxic seizure it ends with crying so this is one thing clinical thing by which you can differentiate between the two as i told you because there are no tests for these things so you don't have got any lab test which can confirm or refute these things but nevertheless i mean as i told you earlier that uh, in most of the cases if somebody do does an ictal or post uh, ictal or even inter ictal eegs they would be normal so these are clinical diagnoses so in breath holding spell starts with crying in reflux anoxic seizures they end with crying in breath holding spells the basic pathophysiology is cessation of uh, breathing because of prolonged expiration so temporary cessation of breathing is the main issue while in reflux anoxic seizures it is the increase vagal intonation so increase vagal tone leading to reduced cardiac output and re reduced blood pressure that is the reason in both cases if the brain is not getting enough oxygen the child might have brief episodes of seizures but these are self-contained soon afterward the child comes back to normal and then by the time they are brought to the ed they are playing around everything is fine most of the time examination findings are absolutely normal so if you are pretty much sure that this is a breath holding spell and reflux anoxic seizures you don't need to do anything now in the next slide i will show you two videos the first video is of a baby who is having a breath holding spell so you will see that the child starts with crying and as he starts crying there is the increased expiration phase of the breathing then he stops breathing has brief jerky moments and then in a few moments he starts coming back and the second uh, video which is of reflux anoxic seizure you will see a child who because of some reason has got increased vagal intonation so he changes his color becomes very pale and gray and then he starts uh, seizing and soon afterward the seizures they stop and he's you know ends up with crying so that's how you know i told you that we differentiate between these two conditions so let's see the videos and uh, after that we will discuss the investigations and the treatment Now coming down to the investigations and treatment, I told you earlier these are clinical entities, no investigations are needed in these conditions. However, sometimes some clinicians might order a full blood count because there has been an association uh, of breath holding spells and reflux anoxic seizures with anemia. So some clinicians they might do a full blood count to rule out anemia because if you treat the underlying condition anemia though anemia is not the cause but can be associated with that and some physicians they might do ecg to rule out any cardiac pathologies though i am of the view that uh, spot uh, ecgs are of no use because even if there is a cardiac reason most of the times when the children are brought to the uh, emergency department the ecgs are normal and if you really want to rule out cardiac reasons then instead of a spot uh, ECG 
24 hour ECG monitoring is more helpful and is more sensitive in picking up the cardiac issues rather than a spot uh, ECG. So spot ECG of no use. I mean, even if there's a cardiac issue, it's going to come out to, as a normal. So if you are suspecting, then it's better to do a 24 hours uh, ambulatory ECG monitoring. I told you earlier, these are clinical entities. They are they happen because of pathophysiology outside the brain. No treatment is necessary. Yes, some parents are terrified that it happens again and again but you just need to give reassurance that eventually the child would grow out of it if they've got more tendencies to collapse and you know hit their head or something maybe parents can help them out by putting them some helmets on them and obviously if they've got temper tantrums or something there should be somebody uh, close around to have a watch on the child so they don't injure themselves so this was all about breath holding spells and reflex anoxic seizures if you like this video gives me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed do subscribe and if you've got any questions put down your questions and uh, i will answer them and in the end have a very good day take care bye bye